All right, time to put some of our work, our artwork into production and into use. And we do that with what's called our proving ground. So we're going to take our creatures that we just designed and cleaned up, and we're going to be putting them into our landscapes. And that can be an incredibly simple idea, but in order to do it well, we have to consider lots of creative issues and problems and then solve those problems. So this is what we're going to end up with at the end of this proving ground. It's due next class. We're going to have an image that combines our creature with the landscape. It does not need to be the entire landscape. We might choose to crop down to a certain part of the landscape based on how we determine the creature to fit in. What we do want is for the creature not to be hidden in the image or not too small in the image. So I want the creature to take up, I usually say, at least 25% of the image. But even this creature doesn't take up 25% of the image. So like 20%, it just needs to be really visible. right? Some students solve that problem by making many multiples of their creature and make them kind of crawling all over the place. But as long as the creature is clearly visible, even if you have to crop down your composition. So that's the image requirement. That's only one part of the proving ground. The image is going to show us if you have recognized the lighting condition and have tried to match the angle of lighting and the intensity and color of the lighting so that it matches your creature. So they feel they're in the same space. You also want to pose your creature, like bend them like a puppet to make sure they sit on the ground or in the environment that you place them. And there's lots of tricks to make that happen. That's the image. There are two other requirements for this proving ground that are worth just as much as creating the image. One is super simple. As you're creating it, you need to pay attention to your pixel dimensions. How many pixels are your, your creature design? How many pixels are your landscape? When you put them together and crop them down, how many uh, pixels overall is the image? And we're, gonna, we're going to show that by saying the physical inches of the image. So this one is 18 inches by 12.5 inches. And then the pixel resolution by 300 pixels per inch. Based on that information, I need you to write down so you're really clear, determine whether this is best suited for printing or best suited for screen, right? So because it's at 300 pixels per inch or higher, this is best suited, suited for a standard print resolution, which means I can make a good print of it at that size. Okay, this image... Okay, and then there's a third thing. There's basically two options for that. This image is 12 inches by 9 inches, but it's only 72 pixels per inch. Maybe you had to do quite a bit of it on PhotoP, and you needed to downsample it so that it would run faster, right? You don't lose any points for that. You just need to say that it's not suitable for print resolution, so instead this is for standard screen resolution. Because if it's 72 pixels or higher at a decent size, then it's good for screen resolution. If it's below 72 pixels, you can't really use it, right? You have to like shrink its size and increase that resolution. The third requirement for this proving ground, and it's all in the rubric, is that once you have the image and you know how it's gonna be used in the real world, whether it's for screen or for print, you want to help us understand why this image makes sense. And that's going to actually help your image. You want to say what this creature is. You can give it a name or not, but you want to describe how it lives in that environment. right? So it's not just a sticker randomly placed on a background. You're showing the, the, the influence they have on each other in terms of the temperature, in terms of the diet, in terms of predator-prey relationships, in terms of camouflage. All of these can give you ideas to improve how your creature is used in the setting and in production. So this creature is floating, so they had to describe why they would be floating and what this is that's coming out of it. So it shelters underneath 
The creature is a free-floating scavenger of the sulfurous gases rich in the atmosphere of its low-gravity environment. It shelters underneath the canopy of the giant mushroom forests and expels a phosphorescent vapor as a byproduct that contributes to the rainbow-colored skies. This is a big part of concept art and of showing your, your ideas, right? Like just giving a little bit of a narration to it so we know what we're looking at. This is an elephant if used by Aztec warriors to repel the Spanish conquistadors, right? Just having that phrase already conjures a lot of creative problems that then your image helps us see solutions to. Some more examples. So let's get to it. So it's important to know, like in this old school Space Jam still, that your creatures do not need to match stylistically with your environment. What they need to match is the lighting condition and the pose. That's why we buy these monster animated creatures on the court with Marvin the Martian and Michael Jordan, right? They're not at all stylistically similar, but because the Space Jam movie was, was one, of the, one of the earliest animated films to use dynamic lighting. So the lighting condition changes on them in real time. Animation before this, like Mary Poppins, when they included the two, they just had flat coloring. There was no lighting on the animated penguins. So by having lighting, it really integrates them into the scene. So lighting direction is important. That means cast shadows, that means highlights. And also, like where their feet are hitting the ground is very important. Right? So they're in perspective in the space. So here's the rubric we're going to try to follow. And we do that with assignment one and assignment two. So I'm going to start right where we left off with assignment two and show you how we can use this PNG that we saved by turning off the background and saving it as a PNG. That PNG, I'm going to mark as purple. Not only did we put it up to canvas as our finished assignment two creature composite, but now we're going to use it for our proving ground. And what I can even do is make a new folder. This is probably a good idea. These are assets. I'm now finished with assignment two. But to put it in production, I'm going to make a new folder for proving ground number one. And I'm going to take that assignment two PNG. And on a Mac, I can just hold down option, drag it into proving ground number one, and it will make a duplicate of it in proving ground number one. Or you can just save your PNG again. But I also need my assignment one landscape. So I'm going to go, go to assignment one, and I'm not going to use my JPEG because that's flattened. I want to be able to put my creature into the space. So, and already it's felt like so long since we finished assignment one that it doesn't even look familiar to me. Where is my PNG? My, uh, that's not good. <laughs> so I want to find my Photoshop version of this assignment. And this is why I title them, because if it's not where I expect it to be, I'm going to search for it. Because my job becomes a lot harder if I don't have a PSD with multiple layers of my landscape. What the heck? Ooh, not good. All right. So I'm going to have to go to my time machine, which is not here, and, and find that PSD file. And that's why you have cloud backup on yours, but I don't have it on mine. My computer's too old. So I'm going to do it with my JPEG, but it's much, much better to do it with the PSD file, and I'll show you why. But creative problem solving. So here we go. To put these together, we're going to open up your landscape in Photoshop. And basically, we do this the same step, whether it's a JPEG or a PSD, but it's just a whole lot easier if it's a PSD. 
we need to separate out and merge together our landscape into foreground, middle ground, background. So as a JPEG, it's just all one layer. So what I'm going to do is take the foreground. I'm just going to lasso it. I'm going to do it pretty loosely for the time being. Be a lot easier with the JPEG where these are or with the PSD where these are already separated and then I'm going to duplicate it so there I have my foreground as a separate asset I might even label it that way I'm going to isolate the middle ground starts at this rock and is this pool and I remember cutting out all these trees very carefully that's my middle ground. So how would I do this if I had the PSD? I would merge certain layers together, right? That made those different sections. And then everything else is the background. So I leave the background as the background. So four middle and background. I put the foreground in front. So it looks like this. Basically, foreground, middle ground. Huh. I have to do the middle ground again. And definitely think about it as like places you could put your creature. Oh, I'm copying from the wrong layer, that's why. There we go. Okay, so foreground, middle ground, and then background. I like to think of it in as like a stage set. And you have like different props that show these different uh, settings. Now I bring my... PNG of my cutout creature into that file. And it should be pretty big. And I put it anywhere I like. I can put it in the foreground. I can move it down behind the foreground and in the middle ground, which is what I think is going to work best for my creature. I can even stick it in the background. And as it comes in, I dragged and dropped it so it's a smart object. So I can immediately transform it with Command T without losing any resolution. So if I think, oh, I want it kind of in the background, or I want it in the middle ground, I can play with the size and the placement. Looks kind of cool back here. And maybe that's something I want to work with. Ideally, you want your creature to take up at least, you know, 20%, 25% of the image space. So something like that. And you want it to help, uh, help your overall landscape illusion. So if I want it to be in front of this tree rather than behind this tree, I need to position it that way. And if I want this tree to be in front of it, I need to make that tree part of the middle ground. So how would, might I do that? I can take this and I can do internal compositing, right? I'm going to just do a rough cutout right now. Take this tree where it overlaps the creature in my placement, duplicate it, move that above my creature. You want to make sure you have overlap. So here we have the paw of the creature going into this water. That's just because my middle ground, or my foreground rather, was kind of hastily cut off there. But because I have that overlap, I have some opportunities. I can erase away with a soft-edged eraser. 
not from there. Shoot. <laughs> Don't want to erase from my creature. 